And as we've been telling you, plenty of Americans in Israel right now, and they are stuck. Congressman Dan Goldman was there for a bar mitzvah when rockets began falling. He's back on American soil, and he's joining us now. So thank you so much for being with us, Congressman. We appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, first of all, we are so glad that you're home. You are safe. Uh, but just in the last hour, we spoke with our former colleague, Rebecca Solomon. She's still stuck in Israel. She had this message for officials here in the States. We want you to take a listen to what she had to say and then get your reaction on the other side. The government, our local leaders, as passionate and as supportive as they are, give us more, give us, get us home. Like enough, you know, we know some politicians were in Israel when the, um, when the attack started by Hamas and they were able to get home and I'm glad they're home safe, but get us home. Like I appreciate prayers and support, but that's not good enough right now. So Congressman Goldman, what can be done or what is being done to help these Americans get back? Well, she's absolutely right, and she should know we are working very hard uh, in conjunction with the State Department, both to identify and track down uh, all Americans who are there and to try to figure out transportation home. Uh, I was lucky enough just to jump online and got a flight on El Al Airlines, which I believe is probably the only airline, yeah. Israeli national airlines, that's going in and out right now. Uh, and that's been a little bit of a surprise because the airport is open, but the airlines are not uh, flying. So uh, we in Congress have already been having discussions about what uh, the U.S. government can do. Uh, and if anyone has loved ones, family, friends, please make sure that you reach out to your local member of Congress. Um, you can do that for me, goldman.house.gov. And uh, we want to make sure that we are tracking everyone who is there, where they are, and that we can start to then figure out how to get transportation, because it does seem like it is not coming back. Uh, the airlines are not coming back as uh, one might have expected them to, so we are going to take action. Yes, it's important for them to contact their local congressman, obviously, to keep track of who is where in each district, right? That is very important. But we heard from Rebecca, the borders are closed, they simply cannot drive out, and time is ticking, right? Each day, another day passes, and it gets worse in the situation here. So what is the timeline? Congress has no speaker. So let's just be real talk. What can be done? How quick are we talking in terms of a timeline to get some of these folks home? Yeah, that doesn't require congressional action. Uh, that will be something that is done by the State Department, by the administration. Uh, Congress will work very closely with the State Department, but there's nothing that needs uh, congressional legislation in, in order to help uh, people evacuate. Yeah. Um, and so it, it is something that I, I can assure you and, and all of your viewers that uh, we are very aware of, uh, we are very focused on, and it is a very high priority. Uh, and I expect that uh, that we will have some movement uh, this week to figure out a way to bring Americans home who want to come home. When you home. say figure it out, do you mean like a chartered flight in that's paid for by the U.S.? What does it look like? Yeah, there, there are a variety of different ways that uh, this can happen if we are in an emergency evacuation situation. There are regulations as to how to proceed on that, and we are in, in contact with uh, the Department of State to make sure that uh, they're certainly aware of of everything. And I'm in personal contact with the embassy in Israel. I was this weekend when I yeah. was there. So I just got, you know, a flight like anyone else would have yeah. gotten. I got no help. But we are we are working hard on this and we're aware of this issue. Well, having experienced it yourself, you were there when it all began and the terror that you felt. Can you explain what that was like for you and your children? Who were stuck there hunkering down in a stairwell of a hotel yeah it was really frightening um, when you start you're woken up by sirens uh, which unfortunately israelis are accustomed to but we certainly were not and when you realize as they make an announcement on the intercom that there's an emergency and you have to get to the stairwell within 90 seconds uh, it is scary it is traumatic and especially uh, for my kids who are still dealing yeah. with some of the after effects of it um, but it pales in comparison to what so many families in southern Israel dealt with as they had terrorists come door to door trying to massacre them, to abduct them, to kidnap them. And no matter the age, whether a baby or yeah. a, a survivor, um, it is absolutely devastating and tragic uh, what this horrific terrorist attack has done to the country of Israel. How did you explain it to your children? Because they are young. 
Well, it varies on age. Uh, okay. You know, my nine-year-olds, we had to give her some some real-life lessons because she understands well enough. My six-year-old boy uh, viewed it as a sports match. He kept asking which team was winning. Um, so it, it's it's really difficult, and it's lessons yeah. that, uh, you know, certainly I never wanted to give my kids at this age, but when you think about it in context, this is how Israeli children grow up every single mm. day. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly a tough conversation to have with the youth, but it's a tough conversation that everybody is having right now just because there are so many angles and sides to this, right? And, and I want to talk about real quick, you mentioned what Congress is needed when it comes to getting people out, but there's a lot of talk about humanitarian aid for people affected by the war as well in Israel. What does that look like? And can Congress take action on that without a speaker? Uh, Congress cannot take uh, pass any legislation right now. Uh, the Republicans need to get their house in order figure out uh, who is going to be Speaker of the House so we can get organized and pass legislation. Uh, there are programs that are already funded that can provide humanitarian aid, and I know there are a number of uh, nonprofit, non-governmental organizations that are already working very hard to gather and provide humanitarian aid, uh, and I expect that will be both for, for Israelis and yeah. for those in Gaza, as it, as it should be. Um, this is a, a horrific, horrific uh, incident, a war now, uh, based on uh, absolute violations of international law and a terrorist attack by a terrorist organization that is unprecedented in Israel's history. And we have to put it in context. This is not just a continuation of a cycle of violence uh, that we're more accustomed to in the Middle East and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. This was a premeditated, orchestrated terrorist attack designed to kill uh, women, children, elderly, indiscriminately and to strike fear and terror throughout the country of Israel. Israel has a right to defend itself, and we in the United States must condemn these acts of terrorists, and we must stand united with our ally, Israel. Yeah. Well, Congressman Goldman, thank you for the work that you are doing to try to bring loved ones home. We are so glad that you are home safe, and thanks so much for your time this morning. Thank you so much. Keep us posted on those efforts, too, please. Will do. All right.